you want to do street photography in Japan. I will talk about my experience, some of my advice, and just kind of brain fart all over the place with you. Okay? Great. Let's get going. Let's talk about my experience as a street photographer here in Japan. I have been to many cities in Japan. Um, I live in Fukuoka, which is like the third or fourth largest city in Japan. But I've also you know, been to Osaka, Kyoto, Tokyo, like more times than I can count. So my experience here in Japan is pretty universal, um, but most of my experience in terms of um, like how I go about the city and the way I carry myself and what I do and don't do is based off of uh, living here in Fukuoka. Whenever I go up to Tokyo, then uh, it's a bigger city, obviously, and I feel more excitement because there's just so much more going on in that city. Like everywhere you turn, there's like a new scene and that's really cool. And I, I imagine that most of the people watching this video are interested in like Tokyo because Tokyo is like, you know, the biggest city, obviously. When you think of America, you think of New York. When you think of UK, you think of London, right? So. Of course, many people are interested in Tokyo. I don't live in Tokyo, but I've been there many, many times. Uh, after I dabbled a bit of, with, with street photography in San Diego, uh, then I moved to Japan and uh, with my wife. My wife is Japanese. Street photography in Japan, here in my city, I would say that people are friendly, overall friendly. Um, I would say that I have never had any truly negative experience here in Fukuoka, Japan, nor Tokyo or Osaka or any other place I've been here in Japan doing street photography. I've never had anyone ever get mad at me. Now, part of that is uh, because it's Japan. Part of that is because of my own experience and way that I go about being on the street. If I were to tell you about my uh, philosophy of being out on the street, my uh, way that I handle myself, you could probably see from my review videos. If you want a good you know, taste of or view of how I handle myself out on the street, you know, just watch any of my other videos, uh, my review videos. And you'll see that even even more so like when I'm not being recorded, you know, for a video, when I'm not doing a video, uh, I handle myself, uh, you know, like that, but maybe a little bit more relaxed uh, or even a little bit more straightforward. Um, I mean, every day is, is day to day. It changes. But overall, what I can tell you is that if you're out on the street, and you're taking a photo of someone, what you should always do is feel confident in yourself and what you're doing. That what you're doing is not wrong. If someone were to have a negative response to you, someone were to get mad at you on the street, you should think about what it is that you want to say back to the person to, de to de-escalate the, the situation. Not a lot of people, of course, understand um, the, the philosophy or like why street photographers exist. Not a lot of people have that foresight to think about it, but of course, you know, if you look back in history, a lot of the most famous images captured in history are from street photographers, you know, or photojournalists and documentarians, whatever you want to call them, right? They're on the street, they're on in an area, they got a camera, they take a picture, it's Candid, you know, most of the famous ones, right? If you think about like 
after World War II, when the sailor came off of the ship, all the sailors were coming off of the ships and stuff, and uh, he grabs the, that one nurse or girl or whoever and gives her a kiss. You know, like that's one of the most famous street photography photos, you know, in the world, right? That's a street photography photo, right? So, I mean, you just have to keep that kind of stuff in mind that, that even you can capture a historical moment, you know, on the street. Can it capture something that's important? Something that's important for, you know, your own life to document, um, for the city's history, for the country's history, for uh, this moment in time and history. And of course, I don't want to talk too much about the coronavirus, but, you know, going out on the street after the coronavirus has gone, you know, how do people carry themselves? <clears throat> Are people happy? Are people sad? Are people still got like a distance going on? Do people get aggravated? Those are the kind of emotions and kind of experiences that as street photographers we should be, ca we should be capturing. So <clears throat> anyways, my experience here in Japan, mostly positive, uh, fun. I meet, I've met so many people on the street. I've met people that, uh, that, you know, like turn out to then follow me or, you know, want to see me again in the future, contact me, you know, who are just fine with, you know, seeing me again randomly. Um, and some, some people that, that meet me and, you know, just say hi and a lot of times they just want to talk to a foreigner or just, they just think it's fun, whatever, you know, and I just give them a high five and, and uh, that's that. Okay, let's talk about respect on the street. Respect on the street doing street photography is a matter of opinion. If you are a person that thinks that respect on the street means like you shoot really telephoto and you're not getting too close to people and you're kind of let letting people be you know from from a, from a far away distance well I don't agree with that um, if you are able to handle yourself with a body language that says I belong on the street as well and, and I, I have my camera and, and it's normal to have a camera, especially these days, I think people with uh, smartphones, uh, which is everyone now, um, everyone thinks that you don't need a real camera anymore, that your smartphone is enough, your smartphone is fine. Okay, well maybe for most people that's true. Smartphones these days are amazing. Uh, but just because smartphones are really good have great cameras doesn't mean cameras on the street shouldn't exist and some people I think especially in America um, in different countries uh, in the West um, they see someone with a camera and they get suspicious of them uh, they get in this mindset like what did, what is this person doing with a camera are they you know like surveillance or like private detective are they a pervert I think a lot of people get like immediately this negative mindset because in America uh, people have their guard up more um, in Europe and America I think people have their guard up more they're more aware situationally aware of the people and things around them and in Japan me, especially, I feel I can just relax a little bit. Nobody's going to steal my shit. And nobody's going to steal my camera. Nobody's going to maybe break my camera uh, because I took a picture of them or something. The society here is a little bit more relaxed. And the big thing is that Japan has a camera culture. What do I mean by that? Well, they make the cameras, first of all, right? They're making the cameras, the Canon, Nikon, Fujifilm, right, Sony. Japanese uh, pride themselves 
in their cameras, just like they pride themselves in their cars and other pieces of tech, right, that come from Japan. Japanese has a, have a sense of pride in the camera industry, right? And it stems back, you know, to World War II when um, the camera industry was one of those industries that was lifting Japan up from the war, from poverty. And people could depend on these camera companies to give them jobs. So it was kind of like, I think, a national pride that you were able to go and buy a camera. And that, I think that sense of pride and um, proudness, right, is, uh, is still prevalent today in Japan. So having a camera on the street is kind of like you're in this cool kids club automatically. You got a camera in Japan on the street? Well, not only is like the Japanese salary man, businessman gonna look at it and probably admire it. Not only are like school kids gonna be like, what's that? Because it's a piece of technology, right? I think the only people that are not gonna be interested in seeing your camera on the street are gonna be like middle-aged women. And I don't mean to harp on middle-aged women, Japanese women, uh, too much, but uh, middle-aged Japanese women are probably the people that I avoid the most in taking pictures on the street. They are just not fun. I'm gonna say that, I'm sorry. But when it comes to everyone else, um, young people, old people, cameras are not a scary thing. Cameras are uh, a fun, cool device that you have. As a foreigner, especially, now I'm gonna get into like being a foreigner in Japan, right? Being a foreigner in Japan is already, first of all, a novelty right uh especially here in fukuoka you know it's in fukuoka we're, we're still like the foreigner base is still growing as opposed to tokyo where i i think it's like there's like this surplus of foreigners there everywhere everywhere you go you know in shibuya it's just like half the people are foreigners well in fukuoka in only like the past five years i've seen the country change drastically when I first got here, I was probably the only foreigner I would see on the street for like hours, right? Um, now I go out on the street and I see a foreigner like here and there, um, one, one every like, you know, 200, 300 people will be a foreigner. Uh, that's, that's not accurate, that's not accurate number, but that's just what I perceive, right? On a busy day you're still kind of like, oh, look, people are looking at you and like, oh, look, a foreigner. Oh, a foreigner with a cool camera. That's interesting. And if you dress nicely, decently enough, like if you wear like a nice shirt like this or whatever, like this is nice to me. So I think like a nice hat or whatever. Like if, if you're dressing, if you're dressing stylish to some degree, then you're gonna be, I think, instantly on better grounds than a lot of other foreigners who dress a little bit more sloppily, I'm gonna say. A lot of other American foreigners who dress sloppily. Um, so already, like, and if you're young too, that helps. Like, when I was younger, um, I think I had even better experiences on the street. Now I'm getting older, I don't shave as much, so, if you're young, you dress somewhat stylishly, you have a cool looking camera, um, you know, you're in a, a city like Fukuoka that's not, you know, impacted by too many foreigners, you're gonna have a good time, you're gonna be fine. Uh, if you're in Tokyo though, you're also gonna have a great time, especially at night. Tokyo, Shinjuku, Shibuya, anywhere in Tokyo at night, um, you're gonna have a good time. Uh, Japanese people are super stiff in the morning and uh, super relaxed at night. 
because they all like to drink a lot. And that's, and that's nice for you, you know, it's nice for you to be able to go out and take pictures of people that are having fun and relaxed. So I would say uh, don't be scared of taking photos at any time of the day here in Japan. You're probably gonna have a good time. I would say like weekday, day times, probably not gonna be the funnest time. And that's like work, work prime time, work time. But of course, weekends, weekday nights, weekend nights, you're gonna be great, you're gonna be fine. So as a foreigner on the street, you also get away with a lot more. I think some of my Japanese friend, the street photographers, they have a different style of shooting where they are more discreet, way more discreet, where, you know, they're more like snap, 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 more no lookers and things like that. Whereas foreigners, like, we'll go straight for it, right? We'll go right up, right up to you, right? And that is the default advantage that we have here in Japan. I get, we get kind of the foreigner treatment in, you know, terms of like, oh, this person just must be here on vacation. They must be here just, you know, on holiday. And they're here to take pictures of this different country that looks so strange to them, right? Just like Japanese people when they go abroad to Europe or whatever, right? They got their cameras and you know, they you know, go and travel and take pictures and things like that. They think that this is the same thing about us. Like we're going out to take pictures of the city, the environment. So if you're skilled enough to be able to you know, learn how to shoot past people and you're skilled enough to be able to kind of be non- um, you can kind of like respect the personal space of people while still capturing them. If you have that skill already, then you're golden because you're going to get away with a lot. Okay, what should we talk about next?